a male part to the Ark of the Covenant and a feminine part to the Ark of the Covenant, guess which order they're in? Isn't it very, very amazing? Because if we look at this, you'll actually see how marriage is supposed to be put together. The Ark of the Covenant itself is the foundational stone that the mercy seat sits on. Inside of it is the instructions for the family. The Torah is supposed to be actually written on the husband's heart and from his heart to his wife through the holy place and to the rest of the world. So the foundation and the Torah is built into the male. It's suppo he's supposed to be the rabbi, the teacher of his house, the king priest of his house. Inside of the Torah are the instructions that allow him to be a righteous judge. The amazing part is, is Yahweh thought through this and thought, oh, because they don't totally write my law on their heart, they're not going to get it right, which means that they're going to judge harshly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the Ark of the Covenant with mercy. And where does he sit? On the mercy seat. So the judgment is below him, which is where the river of life comes out of, by the way, which is where fire came out of in the Tanakh when Nadab and Abihu brought strange fire. Where do you think the fire comes from? It comes from the judgment underneath the seat. But praise the Lord, through the blood of Yeshua, the Bible says this, women are supposed to come together with men and mercy and judgment become undistinguishable. They're identical because true judgment is mercy concealed. You see, when I say the word judgment, you're thinking of sending people to hell, aren't you? When I say the word judgment, you're thinking of going to prison. When I say the word judgment, you're thinking of something negative. But that is not the true definition of judgment. Judgment is discerning right from wrong. Judgment is discerning whether to speak or not speak. Judgment is actually mercy, believe it or not. When someone sins against me, they're wrong. They hurt me. It doesn't matter whether they think so or whether they agree with me. They're breaking my heart. They're breaking the Torah by whatever they did. They're breaking the instructions of the Word of God. I have a choice whether or not I am going to allow death and the curse to come out from underneath me and judge them with the fire of God, or am I going to allow the mercy side of the, what's underneath me, the judgment, to come out and consume them? And so I choose and hope to, and many times I'm not very good at it, but the instruction is, is that we are to have mercy. Do you know why? Because there is such a thing called the great white throne judgment, and I'm pretty sure he's going to not miss anything. So if he waits... Not just to the time that Yeshua gets here, but a thousand years after that to judge mankind. Who are we to start judging them now? You don't know where they're at. You don't know what they're going through. So when someone sins, your job is to lovingly go and correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Somehow we forget that because what we want to do is say, you're breaking the Torah. You're breaking the instructions. You're in sin. You're going to hell. And then the mere fact that you say that, you're sinning. Because you have no right to judge your brother when you have a log in your eye. Take out the log in your eye, then you can see clearly. And then you'll give mercy. Because those who see clearly recognize that they are in no different of water than their neighbor. We're all in hot water. Without the Messiah Yeshua, we are in big trouble. Praise the Lord that the Bible says in James chapter 2, 13, for judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy, but mercy triumphs over judgment. If you really want to be successful in your life, in relationships, you must, you must, you must absorb this concept, a concept that has eluded Jim Staley for 38 years of his life. Because I can tell you what the instruction book says, I can tell you what it says from cover to cover, but actually implementing that in a loving, merciful, compassionate, and kind and gentle way is something that has eluded me because why? I have My head has been inside the book. And what Yahweh wants me to do is sit on the throne with Him 
and to sit on the throne with him, I must understand the mercy seat. Because a true judge knows when to let it go. And a true judge knows when not to let it go. And if you have children, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Sometimes you judge, and sometimes you let it go for instruction later. If you want a real quick, I'm going to go over this this evening, but a real quick way to absolutely remove issues from your relationships is when you're offended, say nothing. Wait. Wait for the right time to have instructions. Because why? Instructions will then come with no emotion. Hasatan uses emotion. He cannot use instructions of Yahweh. So the only way to get into people's life and infect them is to do what? Get into the emotional realm. So if you don't have control of the emotional realm, he will. And then he'll take the instructions of Yahweh and pollute it to such a degree that you're feeding them the tree of knowledge of good and evil and you don't even know. And the poison continues because what they're going to do is get offended at the way that you are coming to them. Not what you're saying. You're feeding them the knowledge of tree of good and evil.